Hey everybody, it's Jason Freed from 37 Signals and today I'm going to walk you through the card table. Card table is a brand new feature we just shipped in Basecamp 4 about a week or so ago and it's our take on Kanban. Now if you're familiar with Kanban you'll recognize some of this. If you're not this will be all new but if you are familiar you're going to see some new things because Kanban as it is is fine but we have some new innovations we've layered on top of it to make it considerably better and more practical in a number of different ways. So I'll walk you through that. Let's just get into it. So uh, first things first, um, con or card table is now added to every Basecamp account if you're using Basecamp 4, which used to be called Basecamp 3. So if you have three, you have four now. And to um, turn it on, you just go into a project. Here's a project I picked. You go up here, you go to change tools, and from here, you scroll down to the tools you aren't using section, and you'll see card table. So I'm just gonna turn card table on for this particular project. You can rename it as well if you want to, and go back here. Now here we have card tables just been added to this project. So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna add a few sample cards in a second, and then sort of walk you through some fake scenarios, but just to give you a sense of how it works. And then we'll look at some actual card tables and actual projects we have set up in our actual account to show you some real use cases. So first, structurally. Um, now, if you're used to Kanban, you're probably used to seeing columns. And we have some columns down here, and we, it defaults to figuring it out and in progress, two columns. You can add more columns by clicking the plus icon here. We also have a column called done, which is a default column, which is not quite a column, but it's a, more like a bucket. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the big change you're gonna see initially, especially if you're used to Kanban, is that there's actually a row at the top. So we've got columns, which is what Kanban typically is, but we have a row at the top, which we call triage. When you add a card to the card table, it defaults to the triage section. Why is this here? Well, in a lot of Kanban setups, you'd start by adding something to a column and then you'd move a card through, a col through the columns as, as like, you know, a workflow or a process. The thing is, is that the way we see it is that the columns should be the actual workflow. And before you decide if you wanna do something or not, it shouldn't live in the workflow. There's a prior stage of the workflow, which is consideration. Do we even wanna bring this into the workflow or not? Bring this into the process or not? And that's why we have a section at the top called triage. So let me just add some quick cards here. I'm just gonna name them one, two, three, four, five, just so we have um, something to play with here. Again, we'll go through an actual um, account and uh, show you what that actually looks like. But here I'm gonna add, oops, five cards. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. These cards start in triage. Now. If you go into a card, you'll see who added it and you can assign it to people. Um, so like in this case, let's say I'll just assign it to Jason Zimdars. Um, I can pick a due date and I can add additional details, screenshots, pictures, text, links, whatever you want, whatever is important. I'll hit save. And um, if you go back here now, you'll see that um, this is the triage column. And these are the items I just added. If you go back to the card table, you'll see them show up right here. Now, to bring something into a flow, into the workflow, you just drag it down into one of the columns, and now it's in the column. I'll drag a few more in here just to kind of show you how that works, right? There we go. And as you move across, you just simply can drag things across, and they move across columns, right? Very typical Kanban, except that everything initially starts out in triage. Now, let me just add another card here. Um, let me talk about some of the other innovations here besides triage. Now, there's also this idea that when you're considering whether or not you want to bring something down into a workflow, sometimes you go yes, and that's when you drag something down. Other times you're like, eh, not now. This is actually the way you think about it, like not now or maybe never, but not now. And so we have a special spot over here in triage called not now. So if, you, if you're looking at something and you're like, uh, eh, we're probably not going to do this right now. I just move it to not now. You'll see, by the way, you can drag things across or you can just select something from menu. So now it's a not now, okay? And now it's out of the triage section and it's now, you'll see one not now. If I click on this, there it is, not now. So this is a place to put stuff without losing it 
that you don't really want to do right now, you want to take out of consideration, you can always bring it back if you want, but it doesn't have to live, into, live in a column down below and it doesn't have to go away completely. You can, of course, archive stuff if you do want to get it out of the way. But not now is a really nice thing you can do from triage. Now, let's walk through a couple little other details here. So every card has this little uh, silhouette of a person and a little plus. So if you see something in triage and you're like, oh, I'll take that, I'll do that, you just hit that and it puts your avatar on it and auto assigns it to you. From within a card, you can always click on that. You'll see it's assigned to me and you can assign it to other people as well. But um, at the sort of card table macro view, you can just click this little thing and give yourself that assignment. So it's a really nice fast way to do that. You can also decide that you might want to watch the triage section in case someone adds something to triage and you want to be alerted. If that's the case, you just go over to here and say, watch this column. Your face will show up here now. It says watching. Any number of people can watch triage or watch any individual column as well. Um, and whenever something new is added to that column or moved into that column, you're going to get a notification. So it's a really nice way to stay on top of things without having to keep you know, coming back and looking. All right. Down here, we've got the two columns. You can change the color of columns if you'd like. That's a really easy thing to do. Um, you can add another column. So we'll call this like almost done, right? Um, add a column. And now we've got the almost done column. You can, of course, reorder columns as well if you want to do that. I'll put this again at the end. And you can, of course, move things through the, the process here. Now, let me talk about a few of the other things that are new here. So. Typically in Kanban, uh, well, stepping back even, forget Kanban for a second, I'll get into that in a second, but people are doing work and sometimes you're blocked on something or something has to pause or you have to put something on hold for a number of different reasons. Maybe you have to look something up, maybe you got to involve someone else, maybe a project's been put on hold, maybe someone's going to be out of town, there may be a million maybes, right? Now with traditional Kanban, what people would do is they'd make another column called blocked. And um, they'd move that item to a blocked column. In our opinion, blocked is not part of the workflow. It's a state. It's a status. It's not uh, something that deserves its own column. Because then when you move things to that column, you sort of take them out of context. Now you're mixing a bunch of things from a bunch of different places into a blocked column. So we came up with this idea called on hold. So in any column, you can say enable on hold. And now there's a little section at the bottom of a column called on hold. In this case, there's nothing on hold. If I drag this card down into on hold, it moves down to on hold. It's a little bit dimmer and it stays down at the bottom of the column. So if you have a bunch of stuff in a particular column, you know, anything that's on hold will stay at the bottom. It means whatever you want it to mean. You can, of course, add a comment to it. You can explain what it means when it's on hold. But mentally, you know that this is still in this phase or in this stage, but we're not actively pursuing it for some reason. And I don't have to take it out of the column and lose the context. I just move it to the bottom and call it on hold. So you can turn that on or off for any column, which is really nice. Um, also, each column itself has a what we call a PERMA, which is a dedicated page, which you can send this link to this page to anyone else. And all of those cards are now represented on this PERMA. You can also add a comment um, about the column itself, not about individual cards, but about the column itself, which is something you can do on these PERMAs. You can also, of course, watch this column if you want. So if anything happens in the figuring it out column, you're going to get a notification. Um, and you can, of course, trash things and archive things as well. Um, it's really a handy way to uh, to get rid of stuff you don't want or put things on hold that are, you're going to get back to later or things are going to you know, kind of happen again once some blocker has been removed. So structurally, you've got triage. Cards are added to triage at the top. You've got columns. You've got on hold. You've got not now and you've got done. So not now, done, and triage and on hold are particularly new ideas that are unique to our implementation of Kanban, which of course we call card table. Now, you can also rename the card table. You can rename the columns. Um, you can do that here. Um, you can disable on hold. You can change the colors. You can stop watching and all those things. But structurally, that's how it works. Now, when you go back to the project, you're going to see a representation. So in this case, I've got figuring it out, in progress, almost done, done. 
If you go back here, you're going to see the same columns in the same order. You're going to see little numbers um, showing you how many items are in each column, and the colors are also going to be represented. So from far away, you, you get a visual representation of what you're about to dive into, which is true in Basecamp in general. This is a collection of documents and files with folders, and you see all those miniature versions of that, campfire chat, message board. You're always seeing a miniature version of what you're going to see when you go inside. It's more like a window into the specific world that you're about to go into. Now, this is not a particularly great example because I just whipped it up really fast. So let's look at some real examples of how we're using card table at 37 signals. So I'm going to go into the Basecamp web project, which is where, um, well, people who work on the web version of Basecamp hang out, do work, that sort of thing. And you'll see here we have two card tables. One's called bugs, one's called quick wins. And let's walk into quick wins first. So quick wins. Quick wins is a collection of small things, small improvements we can do that people can pick off if they have some extra time, right? So we work on the six week cycle uh, time frame, and sometimes projects end early. We also have a two week cool down in between cycles and sometimes people have some extra time they wanna pick something off or they're waiting on something, they've got an hour, what are some of the quick wins we can grab? So this is where we're keeping these. So we have suggestions that pop in here, and anyone can add these suggestions. Um, things that we're actually considering or still need a little bit of shaping, so a little bit more definition, are moved down into here. Um, and then we can move them through the process as we go, and then of course we keep track of what's done over here. You'll see in this case, there are five people watching this board or this, this uh, card table. So anytime a suggestion is added, um, these five people will find out. Let's just click on a uh, card to show you what something looks, out, looks like when it's a bit more fleshed out. So here's who added it, here's where it is. Um, here's some details. So this came from a customer request in Help Scout. This will link to the actual ticket in Help Scout. And then down below, we've got some comments back and forth, some pictures that we're sharing and people are discussing that sort of thing down below. So let's go back here again. Um, here's another example of, uh, of that, right? Discussion on a card, that sort of thing. So let's go back one more level here to the bugs card table. People have often asked us, how do you guys manage bugs using Basecamp? Well, here's one way we're doing it, which is we have a card table set up called bugs. And uh, we keep track of those here. So anytime there's a new bug that's reported, it can be added to the triage. People can then move it down into what's called steps to reproduce. Um, and once that's reproduced, we can move it into contenders, then move it into what's either called designer top five or programmer top five. I know there's actually six. This is the number in the top five. We live in an imperfect world. That happens sometimes. Um, but we sort of shuffle these into the top fives. So if anyone, again, wants to pick off some bugs, pick from one of the top fives. If you're a designer, these are things that designers can handle on their own. These are things that programmers can handle on their own, that sort of thing as well. This is also a good use case for on hold. So uh, let's look at that. Let's look at this one here. So comments disappeared from an instance of a recurring event that was rescheduled. So here's all the details that are um, required to help explain what this is and Haas put this in. So she put this in, she put all the links in place here, and then there's some uh, back and forth, uh, very little back and forth, but it looks like maybe this patch fixed it. Um, so can you ask the customer to check? And so we're kind of waiting on them to sort of get back to us, which is why it was moved to on hold, right? It's not fixed necessarily. It's not done, but it has to sit here until we get some more information. And so again, rather than moving it out into another column called blocked or waiting on or something, it stays where it was, but it just goes down to the bottom in the on hold section. You'll see in this case, uh, Pratik has been assigned to this one. Um, and if, if you hover over someone's name, you'll see their name. So Anoop's been or assigned to that one. And again, we have nine that were completed. We've been tracking bugs much longer than this. So we have literally you know, hundreds or thousands of bugs that we've fixed over the last 18 years in Basecamp, but we recently started doing them in, uh, in the card table. That's why you only see nine done. Of course, we've fixed quite a few more than that, but recently we've been using card table for this and we've got nine done. Um, so that's a great way of looking at bugs. They come into triage. If there's something we want to deal with, we move them down and then move them through and then sort them in the proper column and then move them all the way through the done process. Um, one other 
project I'll show you is product strategy, which has a few more card tables in it. And this is where we keep track of some new ideas we might want to work on for Basecamp. We move those through the process of shaping. But first, they get dumped here. and We consider them. If we like them enough, we'll bring them down and move them through the process. And the same thing is true for hay. Hay ideas come up top. We move them down and bring them across the process and keep track of what's been done. And also what we decided, like, we're not going to do that right now, right? Um, and there's some stuff in there which we can always change our mind on at some point. So that is the card table. It's a really wonderful, simple implementa implementation of Kanban um, with a few extra details that are uh, especially useful and practical um, that we think really kind of take this to the next level. If you have any questions about it, just hit me up in the comments down below and happy to get back to you. And also, if you want me to do another video on a specific piece of it, just let me know and I'd be happy to do that as well. Thanks again for watching.